Welcome survivors! Today we're finally going back to the wasteland to continue our post-apocalyptic journey and a lot has changed since we walked out of the vault last time. Even though I had my hands full with a huge bulk of pieces I got in the last couple of weeks, I still managed to get a lot of great work done on the mock, so today you're in for a treat. The vault is looking better than ever, the terrain is almost done and the mock is getting one step closer to its completion. But of course, before I show you how it looks today, you still need to catch up with all of the progress I made over the last 3 weeks, so grab a bottle of Sunset Sarsaparilla and pop some buff out because we're starting right now. So guys, if you saw the previous episode, you know what state we finished the work, right? We have the door secured into the main wall with some random walls on the sides and everything is looking right, right? Well, no, definitely not. These walls simply could not stand there so clean and untouched when the terrain all around is damaged and dirty. So I decided to do something about it using some snot work. I just grabbed a couple of light grey tiles, placed them on darker plates and we got ourselves a very neat looking wall with quite a regular pattern yet at the same time harshly treated by the nuclear blast. And what's even more fun about this wall are the brown stripes that are forming our previously established pattern that are just so slightly sticking out of the wall about a millimeter and a half so the texture of the wall just couldn't be more fitting to my idea of the build. Also, I made the upper part of the wall at an angle as planned but with slight different tilt than I first wanted but here I had to work with the wedge tiles that we have available so 45 degrees was the most obvious choice and to be honest I kinda like how it turned out. So I guess that with all of that established we can now start working on the right side. And here I wanted to show you how exactly I did the wall structure so let's go ahead and do that now. To be able to make the pattern with tiles I had to figure out how to mount it all having the brown stripes sticking out a bit but with the help of the higher snot bricks I was able to achieve quite a strong and simple connection. The only thing I had to work around here was the back edge of the sides because as these walls are recessed a bit from the brown stripes the length of the side is not entirely 7 studs. But that's nothing that a bit of snot work within snot work won't fix right? So with this little contraption done we can now mount it in its rifled place and now all we have to do is finish it up like the one on the left side. First of course I made the angled wall here using a mixture of mixel joints and a rubber band holding it in place and with that done it's time to start tiling it all with a similar texture adding some cracks here and there still trying to hold the same pattern of the tiles as on the left side wall. Let's just quickly check how the progress looks in place to see if everything is fitting nicely with the rest and yeah, I guess we can finish it all up like this.
I just placed a couple more tiles on the top, a few on the side and this way we have the whole wall ready to be mounted and connected with the other side with a beam made of course in the same style as the rest. The ceiling that will be here is just plates for now and we'll get back to it in a bit but first let's check out how it's all connected. Here the process was relatively simple again using the same snot technique as on the sides to connect it to the front beam but still in the back this brick is just a placeholder to hold the main wall from falling apart so in the final version I will need to change the stud direction one more time to have this edge looking like the ones below. It may look a bit fragile right now, but trust me, it's holding together better than you may think, but before we get into tiling up the ceiling, I wanted to change the workflow a bit with making some of the rock work just to establish the slope pattern that will dominate the landscape and what we got here should be a nice way to finish the mock from the sides. Of course as we go higher it will probably change a bit technique wise but for now I really like how the rocks look both in terms of their shape which even though simple it does its job but also with the color scheme. There is something about this color combo that just works so good here. Not only by its own but also working great together with the ground colors having the medium nougat spots contrasting with the main color just like under the sand all around. And speaking of the sand, let's maybe have a quick look see on what's happening on the disconnected part of the mock because I just received a couple of new parts from the pickup brick online so let's do the unboxing there. It by all means isn't a big haul I got because these are only the pieces from the bestseller category and most of the parts I ordered are still on the way and will probably get here in a couple of weeks but at least I got some of the pieces so why not check them out right? So I got a couple of seagulls, a hair and an otter because you just can't buy on pick a brick without getting at least a few new animals, right? Also, I got some standard legs in white and green. I will need for my two future projects I already have in mind after I finish this one. A few grey lollipops I may want to incorporate in the door somehow. A bunch of tan quarter circles for adding even more details on the ground some dark orange ingots and basically a bunch of parts for the pickup I designed in episode 2. Oh and I also got two golden epaulets I will also need someday in the future, I think. So again, not much pieces but for sure with all of the yellow stuff I'll be able to make the car look more appealing at least until the rest of the pieces arrive and I get to making the completed version. But for now, let's get back to the mock itself because with the rock work outlined from the bottom, we can now finally finish up the ground details. And this is how it looks in the end. On this side of course. All in all, the pattern is the same as it was all around, so no need to break it down into details, but finally we can say that this side of the ground is finished so let's jump to the right side. And here I also wanted to spare you looking at the same wedge length so you wouldn't get too bored, but with that out of the way we now have the entire groundwork finished and I just love how it's working with both the rockwork as well as the walls themselves, so now I think we should finish the ceiling above the vault door as it still needs some tiling and I need to cover the gaps I left here. And actually, that is the first thing I did. As one stud was too wide to put here, I had to make the same snot contraption as previously using brackets to have it a bit thinner and I connected it all to the main wall just to have it more stable for now. So with that established, Let's finally grab a buttload of tiles and finish up the ceiling. 
At this moment, I've already used up all of my wedge tiles, so there will be just a couple of cracks here, but I think that should be more than enough as we got a pretty decent texture here, and now we can mount it all in place where it should be. Not the easiest task because of the angles and the limited space we got here, but also you may remember that the three upper segments of the main wall are not yet connected, which will come later on, but after a couple of tries I managed to secure it all in place and now we have this part finished as well. And it looks awesome. It's all perfectly aligned just like I want it with no bigger gaps anywhere and I even added a pair of lights that are here in the game and I must say that I really like how it looks compared to the plain brick built walls we had in the previous episode. The main wall will also get a couple of cracks here and there between the slopes but for that I'll have to order a couple of more parts so let's leave it at that. So now with that done, before I show you how the entire mock is looking at the moment I wanted to show you how it looks from the back. I know, nothing too exciting as there will be some adjustments to make, but that will have to wait because I will be doing it all as I expand the rock work in the next episode, so first I will need to make some kind of a solid frame that will prevent it all from collapsing when I'll be taking this build to a convention someday. And who knows, maybe I'll add something else from this side as well. You know I'm a sucker for making interiors, so maybe I will make at least a part of a catwalk here as well. But that is still far away. So before we wrap this episode up, let's check out how the entire mock looks like at the moment. And just wow. I don't know if it's the detailed walls or the finished groundwork, but it all is looking so much better than last time. And I even switched a couple of parts I got from the hole in the car, so that probably adds some value to the entire thing as well, but taking it all in consideration, I really, really like where this is going. But what do you guys think about the progress I've made? Be sure to let me know in the comments section which part of today's progress do you like the most, and of course, don't be a ghoul and smack that like button and subscribe to the channel if it's your first time here. For today, I think we are done here, so I will see you all in the next episode, this time without any delays I hope, and until then, as always, make sure you keep it bricking.